Or if you guys hear it not, because I closed the door, just let me know where someone go get it. But if anybody's late. Uh, okay, welcome. I'm Heather Schmidt. Um, I teach the Tuesday night here at um, Heartland at 5:30. For those of you that don't know me, welcome for all of you being here and welcome out there. Um, so we're gonna work with, I always have a theme, we're gonna work with gratitude today. So I did a whole 10 week session on gratitude because I started reading about how helpful um, gratitude is uh, for your life. So I thought I'd come back to that because I haven't done that in a while. But um, so when we talk about gratitude um, right now, I have a lot of things to be grateful for in my life. I have the summer off because I'm a teacher. So I'm really grateful for that. I'm grateful for the people in my life or in my life. Um, but there are times where like, even though I have a lot to be grateful for, I can sort of focus in on the negatives or the uh, sort of bad stuff that's happening. And that really, um, in my opinion, isn't a helpful or healthy way of living. So um, I, I, I really have to take the time to focus on what I'm grateful for, what I have rather than what I don't have. Um, so tonight's or today's practice is just coming back to that intention of feeling grateful for maybe even just gratitude for giving yourself the gift of yoga today. So taking that pause, um, but also working with the body and sort of paying tribute to each body part and being grateful that we're mobile. And, and that might not be the case as we get older or we get less mobile. So just um, realizing how much gratitude can change your perspective, um, your point of view, and even your day. You can really switch if you kind of go into that grateful uh, mode. But also I really think it can change your life if you're focusing in on what you're grateful for rather than what you're not grateful. For. So that's what we're going to do today. We're just going to land in the space. So just take a seated position, like a really comfortable one. Um, and the way I have you sort of land in the space is you drop that pelvic floor. So we're going to ground down with our pelvic floor, which means just doing that Kegel squeezing and then allow your spine to lift. If you feel comfortable, you can go ahead and close your eyes. So whatever you were doing maybe an hour ago, 15 minutes ago, just kind of let that go and be here. So you don't have to think or plan for the next 75 minutes, you just get to be and feel. So lengthen up the spine as you drop the pelvic floor, release the shoulders. So the shoulders in general, when we're doing yoga, just think about them being far away from your ears. So allow them to relax. Then see if you can soften your face by releasing the jaw and releasing the eyebrows. And then maybe picturing a string coming from your spine all the way to the crown of your head, pulling your spine up. So lengthening as we're grounding. Take this moment to bring attention to the breath. So the breath can bring us back into the space or bring us present. So we can do an easy check-in with our breath. So let's see where we're at with the breath. So go ahead and take your two thumbs and put them together and then just place your hands over your heart. I'm going to time you for one minute while you breathe and just breathe normally. Um, and you're going to just count your inhale. So we're going to check in to see where you're at with the breath. No judgment. So you can begin counting the inhale only.
Okay, just keep that number in mind. So this time we're gonna do it again, but bring in that Ujjayi breath. And if you're not sure what that is, then just think about making the inhale really long and the exhale really long. So yogis that have been doing this for a long time, they can do it like one breath in a minute. We're not trying to get there. We're just trying to get less than where you were just at. And again, there's no judgment. Just try to make the inhale a little bit longer. So we're gonna do it one more time. So go ahead and count your inhales. Longer inhale, longer exhale. Okay, that was a minute. So just try to keep that ujjayi or that long in and on that tail in mind as we do the practice. I'm going to do a quick reading about gratitude. It says gratitude unlocks the fullness of life, turns what we have into enough and more, turns denial into acceptance, chaos into order, confusion to clarity, can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend, turns problems into gifts, failures in, into successes, the unexpected into perfect timing, and mistakes into important events. It can turn an existence into a real life and disconnected situations into important and beneficial lessons. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. Gratitude makes things right. So at this moment, go ahead and take us or make an intention or set an intention for your practice. So it could be a word or a phrase that kind of popped into your head, or you can stick with mine. I will say I am grateful for, and you can fill in the blank. We're going to start in tabletop. So go ahead and get on all fours. Find that good alignment. So shoulders are in line with wrist, hips in line with knees, fingers spread, we press into the finger pads. We're going to do what we what I call chin tucks. So we're going to really work the upper back. So we're going to be in neutral spine. So draw the navel in first. And then you're not going to have that arch just yet and then press through the finger pads so it's almost like you're rounding the upper back. Then we're gonna take our chin and we're gonna scoop it as we pull the shoulder blades together and the chin comes towards the chest. And then release by pressing the upper back and rounding the upper back. Again, we'll do the chin tuck. So the chin comes out here, it's like we're gazing towards the horizon. And then we start to tuck the chin towards the chest as our shoulder blades come together. You should be feeling it in the upper back. And then release by pressing into the palms, finger pads. Good. We'll do another one. So scoop the chin, shoulder blades come together. Chin comes towards chest. Go ahead and release. One more time, chin tuck. So scoop, shoulder blades come together, hold it here. So allow your neck to be in line with the spine and then release. I'm working with our fingers. So you can keep all fingers, try to on the mat and then just lift the palm. So you're doing palm lifts while the fingers stay. So notice the different sides. So my right hand can barely do it. And then my left hand is like, oh, problem.
And then after about five times on each side, come into cat cow. So find your rhythm. Come into that gaze towards the horizon on the cow. That's the inhale. And then exhale round the spine, chin comes towards chest. You can either stick with me or go at your own pace. Everybody has a different breath. Let's do two more. And after that second one, we're going to make our way into puppy pose. So toes are curled under. Just make sure you're Hips are in line with your knees. So you keep that there and then you start to walk out your hands. You could use a block for your forehead, but you're walking your hands out and then your forehead slowly makes its way towards the mat. It might not touch. So working with the upper back again, shoulders. Take one big deep inhale, one big deep exhale. Go ahead and come back to tabletop. Working with the twist of the spine, bring your right hand closer to the center. Inhale, left arm comes up. We're gonna thread the needle. So exhale, we come through. Shoulder lands on the mat, side of the head, temple. And then start the twist by kind of shimmying that left shoulder underneath. And then the gaze can go towards the ceiling. You want to work with the upper back stretch. You can take that right shoulder and sort of bring it down towards the mat and make it upper back. Or you can shimmy more that left shoulder underneath. Find the breath here. So we tend to lose it when we're in twists. One more inhale, one more exhale. And then gently come out of the twist. So second side, we'll bring that left hand closer to the center. Inhale, right arm comes up. Thread the needle on the other side. Bring that shoulder under, that temple down on the mat. That top or that left hand can come out in front. Again, start to shimmy the shoulder and start to turn your head towards the ceiling, your gaze towards the ceiling. If you want a little upper back stretch, take that left shoulder and start to bring it down towards the mat or come back into the twist. And find that breath. Go ahead and release the pose and just do three more cat cows before we get into down dog. Mm -hmm. 
when you're ready, make your way to downward facing dog. Spreading the fingers wide. Any sort of movement, thighs pressed back, pedaling out the feet. Bending the knees, maybe bouncing a little bit. Shaking your head, yes, shaking your head no. All right, go ahead and lift the right leg up, bend the knee, open up the hip. See if the left foot is straight. And then you can straighten the leg, then bend the knee and just see if you can feel some sensation in the butt cheek, the hip. All right, release that foot back to the mat. That left leg comes up, same thing, bend that left knee, gaze can go underneath the left armpit and just bend and straighten that leg. All right, bringing the knees, sorry, bring the foot to meet the other foot and then bringing the knees down. We're coming into child's pose. So big toes come together. I like to sit back on my heels first and then walk out. Forehead goes towards the mat. Using a block or your fist, if that doesn't quite come down. Reconnecting with the breath here. Sway the head side to side. Gentle with the neck, massaging the third eye. Go ahead and walk your hands over to the right. So we're opening up that side body. So hands come over to the right in child's pose. That left hand can come on top of the right hand and then breathe into the rib cage. Really pressing out on that left hip so we create space in the body. All right, go ahead and walk over to the other side with the hands. That right hand can go on top of the left hand, breathing into that left, right rib cage, pressing out on that right hip, opening, making the body more spacious. Coming back to center, take three deep breaths, hawing out that exhale. Making your way back to down dog and then eventually coming into forward fold. So however you meet your feet and hands, Allow your body, your shoulders, your back, your head to release. Swing side to side or front to back. Buzzing out the lips because that helps with the jaw. And then straighten the legs if you can, and then start to walk your fingertips over to the right. That means your right leg is bent and your left leg is straight. So isolating the hamstring on one side. Go ahead and walk over to the other side with the fingertips. So this time the right leg is straight, the left leg is bent.
back to center, bending the knees, and then slowly coming all the way up. Head comes last. All right, when you're ready, you can walk to the front of the mat. And bring those thumbs together and place the hands over the heart. Here's where we come back to that intention. Help us focus and remind us, I am grateful for. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, fold. Step back to down dog. That right leg can come up high, or you can just draw it all the way into the chest and bring it through. So we're just coming into the low lunge. However you want to do that is fine. Drop the back knee. Walk that foot out to the side. You can grab a little more space by bending or straightening the leg a little more. You could always put um, a blanket underneath and then roll that foot out. And that's where we're going to work with the hips. So you can move side to side. You can circle the hips. That's really hard for me to do, but you can do it. Just make sure you go both ways. Sometimes I like to do a push up here just with the arms to see where I can find that sensation in the hip. Go ahead and walk that foot a little bit closer, so not so much on the end. And then rise up, we're gonna come into a twist. So that left hand comes on the outside. That right hand could start on the hip and then lengthen up. Let's see, inhale, exhale, twist. Gaze goes towards that back arm. Inhaling to lengthen the spine, exhale to twist. One more time, inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist. Go ahead and release, step back to down dog. So coming into that low lunge, you can kick that leg high or you can just pull all the way through. Drop the back knee, left foot walks out to the edge. Again, moving the hips. I like to sway them. Like I said, some people can do circles. I'm not really sure why I can. <laughs> and trying that push up, maybe feel that sensation in the hip. Walking that foot a little bit closer to the center, rising up. Hands can come to hips and then take that right hand, place it on the outside of that left knee, lengthen up and then twist. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, deepen. Go ahead and release the twist and then bring that back knee up, step back to down dog. Inhale to plank and then come all the way down. Forehead comes to the mat, widen the feet on the mat. So as wide as the mat to help with the low back, press into the feet, the thighs, draw the shoulders down, shoulder blades together and lift the head, the chest and the hands on the inhale. Exhale back down. Let's do that again. Press into the feet and the pelvis and the thighs. Lift. 
Next time we're lifting the feet. Inhale, let's stay here for a couple breaths. And release back down. Make your way back to downward facing dog. <laughs> Feet need hands into that forward fold. Hands come up the shins. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, arms sweep up. Hands come together on the exhale and back to the heart. You can choose your mudra and come back to the one we started with. I am grateful for. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, fold. Slip back to down dog. I want to get your blocks ready. All right, let's go ahead and inhale that left leg high or just pull it all the way through. However you want to get to that low lunge. Back knee comes down again. So you can use the blocks. That's up to you. We could start off there. Again, lengthening the back leg side. Like the, pick up my back knee and then drop it. So I have a little more space. And inhaling, gaze towards the horizon. Then exhale, we're going to straight come in half split. We're not going to stay, so we're going to go in between that inhale and then that exhale. We fold over. You can go ahead and find your own pace. We'll eventually stay in that intense hamstring position. So if you're a biker or a runner, your hamstrings might feel a little tight. All right, next time you're on that exhale and this leg is straight. So first, before you fold over, you wanna gaze one more time towards the horizon on the inhale, draw the belly button in so you create space and then exhale, fold over. Now, for me, this is pretty intense, but if you wanna have it a little more, be a little more intense, spread the toes, flex the feet, flex the foot, and then pull the heel back. If you want more intensity, you don't have to have it, right? Make sure you're using that breath though. You can also draw back that heel. It's, it's almost like you're dragging back. Take one more breath here. All right, go ahead and release by bending that knee. Come up to a higher lunge. Maybe widen your stance for balance. Sink a little bit down. So we're going to come in a twist on this side so that right hand comes on the outside. Lengthen up and then twist. So you're welcome to stay here where you can have that elbow around, come into the twist here. You could always drop the back knee. So with the high lunge, it's gonna be a little more for balance. This is a little, I get a little more twist if I drop the knee, it's just what you want. All right, go ahead and release the twist, the ends come down to the mask, step back, the down dog. Right leg comes up this time, right? Yep. Pull all the way through. Low lunge, drop the back knee. This is maybe where you use those blocks again. Find your space here. Inhale, gazing towards the rising. Exhale, pull over. So maybe just notice, is this side a little different? Not a lot of judgment, just notice.
right, the next time the leg is straight, stay here. But before we go into that, like we're staying there for good, you wanna inhale, like look, gaze towards the horizon, draw the navel in and then fold over. And then see if you can flex the foot, spread the toes. If you want a little more intensity, draw the heel back. It's not really like you're actually moving the heel, but it's imaginary, like drawing it back. One more deep inhale, one more deep exhale. All right, release by bending that front knee. Coming up in a higher lunge, widening the stance for balance. Go ahead and sink down a little bit. And then bring that left hand on the outside, rise up, exhale, twist. Again, keeping it here if you'd like, you could always drop the back knee or you can hook that elbow if you'd like. Again, this is more for balance. If you drop the back knee, you get a nice bigger twist. Find that inhale, find the exhale and the twist. All right, go ahead and release the hand, step back to down dog. Inhale to plank. Come all the way down, rest on your left cheek. So you wanna see if you're gonna have enough room to spread your arms out eventually to a T. So you might have to shimmy up or down, depending where your neighbor is. But first let's take our a rest on our left cheek with our arms alongside our body. Allow the shoulders to release into the mat. Maybe you're grateful for some rest. All right, bring that left arm out to a T. I want to look to see if it's straight out. You don't really want it at an angle. Right hand comes in line with the chest. So your left, you're going to keep your left sort of side of your face, but it's going to start to roll to the back of your head, but you're going to start to roll your whole body over to the right. And that top leg is either going to dangle or the big toe might touch or you possibly might bend that right knee. So really check in with the breath here because this can be pretty intense. So you wanna breathe into that sensation. Good, so it's big shoulder opener. So if you're, I see some people already have their right knee bent. If you're like, hey, I want a little more, you could see if you could bend that left knee. It's not required, any variation is fine. Just really go up to that edge point, feel the sensation and stay with the breath. All right, gently release by rolling back onto the stomach. And then just rest on your right cheek now. So again, finding this rest, sort of glorious arms alongside the body, having some gratitude towards or for the rest, at least the shoulders and the arms.
Now you're bringing that arm, that right arm up to a T. So check to see if that is straight out. And then take that left hand right by the chest and start to press into that left palm so you can start to roll your body over, maybe the back of the head. So again, that leg might float or it could be the big toe touches or you could possibly bend that left knee, breathing into that shoulder. So maybe some of you are at the point where like, oh, I can also bend my right knee. Again, not required, just do any variation where you find that edge point. Take one more big inhale, one more big exhale, and then go ahead and release down to the mat. And then taking your time, but make your way back to downward facing dog. Feet meet hands, any way you choose. We're in that forward fold. Rising up to that inhale, lift. Exhale, fold. <laughs> Sorry, that was a bad cue. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead. Exhale, hands come back to the heart. I am grateful for. Come back to your intention. Back to your breath. All right, those of you that are in the studio, if you want to face that way, I'll just guide you through it. I'll, I'll be up on the screen, but just get into wide stance. We're going to be in warrior two. So let's first start off with warrior two. So just make sure the ankle and the heel are aligned. It doesn't really matter what foot. It's however you want to do it. So go ahead and sink into that front leg. Draw that knee towards the pinky side. So it's going to open up that thigh. Really feel it. Sink a little deeper, arms float up. So draw the shoulders back and down. Good, sink a little deeper. Press out on that back foot. So we wanna have the same amount of energy working with both legs. So go ahead and take that forearm to the thigh. We're gonna come into side angle. So that top arm is gonna be in line with the ear. And then because we're kind of slumped over, Open up that side body and then see if you can draw the heart towards the ceiling. And then see if you can let up on that forearm. So we want to kind of slump over and then see if you can sink a little deeper into that front leg. All right, let's return to warrior two. Now you may need a block. We're going into triangle or trikonasana. So you want to straighten that front leg. You can use a block in front or you can just slide that hand down and you can stop wherever it feels good, but you can go down to your ankle or you can bring your fingertips to the floor. Once you're here and the arm is up, draw that shoulder back, the top shoulder. So it's like sagging down. You just really want to draw it back. Excellent. Everybody looks really good. So gaze and go towards the ceiling if that feels good on your neck. Again, see if you can open that heart towards the ceiling. All right, bend into that front knee to release and then come back through warrior two. Okay, we're just gonna flip to the other side. So that's gonna be parallel to your mat. And then we're gonna move the other foot the other way. Does that make sense? All right, come into that warrior two position. So sink into that front leg. So bending the front knee, sinking deep into that as you're pressing out on that back foot. So you really wanna work that because we wanna have even energy distributed through the legs. The arms float up, draw the shoulders back and down. 
gaze goes over that front finger. And then with that knee, that front knee, see if you can kind of push it over to the pinky side to open up that thigh. Good. Sink a little deeper. All right, now take that forearm for side angle, resting it gently on the thigh, opening up the side body, that top arm's in line with the ear, and then roll the heart up towards the ceiling. And then see if you can lighten up on slumping over. So see if you can remove the forearm. There you go, good. One more twist towards the ceiling with the heart. Sink a little deeper, then release to warrior two. All right, trikonasana or triangle on the other side. So straighten that front leg, and then we're gonna slide that hand down. Good. Now gaze goes towards that top hand as we open up the shoulder. So that heart, again, twist towards the ceiling. Inhale, lengthen that top arm, drawing that shoulder back. Exhale, bend that front knee, come back to warrior two. Now flip the feet, or in here you'll face the window. The toes will be sort of uh, a little bit in, and then we're gonna come into a forward fold, wide forward fold. So you might wanna adjust once you start to fold, and then bring your fingertips in line with your toes if that's available and then allow your head and neck to release. So really, really working the hamstrings here. Shake the head, yeah, shake the head now. Now, if you feel comfortable, place the hands in the thigh crease. So you're gonna stay forward in that forward fold, but you're gonna press the, the hands into the thigh cr crease. So then you can feel the hamstrings a little more. All right, then hinge at the hips and make your way up, Just standing. Now heel toe the feet together. And you can grab both your blocks. We're gonna come into pyramid pose. So that's pretty intense hamstring. That's why we've been kind of doing a lot of hamstring stuff. So you can place it at the top of your mat. I'll do it right here, both of them. Let's start with our right foot forward. My head's totally cut off. Right foot forward and then just step the left foot back. So it doesn't have to be that far and it doesn't have to be that wide. So this is probably good. Everybody's different though. We're gonna come in and out of pyramid. We'll stay on the third one. So inhale, arms sweep up. And then exhale, we're folding over that straight front leg. We're gonna come back up. So that's a lot of balance. So really ground into the feet especially for one. That's the inhale, the exhale will fold over. So again, you could be using your blocks here, but they're mainly for when we stay. Inhale, we come back up, we rise back up. And then see if we can lengthen first. So really lengthen and then draw navel into spine and exhale fold. So we're gonna be here for a little bit. You can use the blocks here, any height is fine. We can tend the fingers. We really need to breathe into the intensity here. Focusing on gratitude. So maybe right now it's hard to because it's intense, but maybe later you'll feel better. One more deep inhale, one more deep exhale. Bend that front knee to give yourself some relief and then step up. We're just gonna come up and do the other side. 
So again, placing those blocks where you had them before, if you moved them, that left foot is gonna be up front and then just set that right foot back. I forgot to say this, but your hips wanna be, your hip points where you can feel your hip bones are gonna be square to the front. All right, inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, fold over that front leg. Inhale, press into the foot as you come back up. Exhale, slow it down again. Inhale, arms sweep up. Lengthen first before we decide to fold. Draw the navel into the spine. Exhale, we're gonna stay here. Use those blocks at any height. Maybe you're up here. But really release the head and the neck. But also tent your fingers. And see if you can, I know I say this all the time, but draw that navel into spine even more. So then you have more space. It makes it a little less intense. Right, one more deep inhale, one more deep exhale. Release by bending that foot and then just make your way into downward facing dog, however that looks for you. Pause and notice. So maybe our hamstrings feel a little bit looser. Hopefully. A little more space. All right, that right leg comes high into the sky. And then we're going to bring that through and bring that right knee towards the right wrist, coming into pigeon. So find your variation of pigeon. So sometimes I stick a block or a blanket underneath that butt shape. However, if I stay straight arms and I sort of move side to side, then it sort of makes its way down. You can stay up here as long as you need to, or you can start to make your way down to four arms. Use a block if you need to. You can also stuff a blanket underneath that hip as well. <clears throat> so just bring awareness to your face. Are you clenching your jaw or clenching? Yeah, buzzing your lips helps a lot. Are you was it called furrowing your brow? Are you clenching your eyebrows? I'm gonna say. If you are, allow that to release. So the intensity can really start to tighten other parts up. So see if you can soften. Every part of your body soften a little more. If you're not in straight arms, come up back through straight arms. Then pull that left leg through and then draw that right foot back to downward facing dog. Again, pause. Maybe you have gratitude for how open that hip may be. Left leg comes up and you're drawing it through left knee towards left wrist. Same from the other side. Find your variation. And I love to make movement here. Lock a blanket underneath that hip. And then when you're ready, slowly make your way down your forearms or on a block. Reminding you to soften that face. So release the jaw, release the eyebrows. softening any other part of the body that you're holding tension. 
See if you can let that hip soften. More inhale, one more exhale. I'll just roll over onto whatever that hip you're on. It's my left hip. And then swing that right leg and swing that leg over. You're going to come in to stack those. So your heels will hit the edge of the mat so you can have enough room to lay down on. All right, inhale, arms sweep up. And then bring your arms out in front of you. Exhale all the way down. Knees make their way into the chest, giving yourself a nice little hug. Any sort of back massage, you can move the, the legs in circles with your hands on your knees, or you can just sway side to side. Right. I'm suggesting supported, supported bridge, but if you want to do regular bridge, that's fine. So if you're doing supported bridge, just go ahead and grab your block. We've done a lot of work with the legs, so that's why I'm choosing support it, but that's a few. So bring your heels as close as you can to your butt. Regardless if you're a supported bridge or not, you're gonna lift the pelvis. If you have the block, go ahead and place it right at that sacrum, which is like the top of the butt crack. And then see if you can draw your heels a little bit closer. Squeeze the thighs, press into the feet. And then either if you're supported or not, you can draw the shoulders in. Check in with the neck. So you want the gaze be towards the ceiling, neck in line with spine. Take five breaths here rather, either if you're supported or not. And after that fifth breath, go ahead and regardless of which one you're in, lift the pelvis up, remove the block, or just slowly bring your back down one vertebrae at a time. All right, knees make their way back into the chest. Hands come on the outside of the feet, coming into happy baby, drawing the shoulders to the mat. Any sort of movement here. Rock side to side, move the legs. Maybe channel your inner baby. All right, knees make their way back into the chest. We're just going to stay here, though. And then arms come out to a T, and we're going to rock side to side, but not dropping the legs down yet, using your core to move as slow as you can side to side.
All right, the next time you're over to the right, go ahead and drop the legs over the right. Gaze goes over that left shoulder, left hand. You're welcome to stay with the knees bent, or you could take that top leg out long, stretches the IT band. If you want a little low back stretch, you can take and take that right hand into the knee crease and pull up that, pull that knee towards the chest. Check in with your shoulders, both shoulders should be on the mat. So you need to adjust. One is kind of sticking up. All right, release if you had your hand there. Come back through center with the knees and then drop them over to the left. Right arm comes out to a T. Maneuver the shoulders, the shoulders, both shoulders are on the mat. Top hip leg can come out long or you can take that left hand and pull on that knee. Bring it up towards the chest, low back stretch. All right, go ahead and come back to center. And then bring your legs up in the air. So stillness or movement, arms can be out to a T, W arms are up overhead. All right, you're welcome to stay here or take the next two minutes or so and do anything your body needs before final resting pose. So people like to do plow here or the child's pose even, another bridge.
So in about 30 seconds, I'll start a body scan. So as you make your way into Shavasana, a final resting pose, grab a blanket, my pillow. Maybe using the bolster for your, under your knees. All right, starting with the base of the body, allow your heels to be heavy, feet splay open, releasing the toes, calves are heavy, releasing, surrendering the hips and the pelvis to the mat, letting go, backs of the hands heavy, Releasing the fingers. Surrendering the shoulders, allowing them to let go into the mat. Back of the head heavy. Softening the face by releasing the eyebrows and the jaw.
as you start to make your way back into the space, just some gentle movements, wiggling your toes, wiggling your fingers. Some bigger movements with the body. When you're ready, rolling on to your right side in the fetal position, taking a couple breaths. Making your way up to a seated position. Get a little reading before I say goodbye. <clears throat> it says gratitude turns negative energy into positive energy. There's no situation or circumstance so small or large that it's not susceptible to gratitude's, gratitude's power. We can start with who we are and what we have today. Apply gratitude, then, it, then let it work its magic. Bring your hands to the heart. Thank you for showing up tonight in person and on Zoom. I say if we practice in here, we do better out there. Namaste. Yeah, thank you for coming. <laughs>